Welcome back to the Scare Stiff Podcast. This is your host, Mike, and my co-host, Jason Voorhees. How are you doing today, my guy? And he's back, the man behind the mask. Dude, I love this one. Why why, why do you embarrass me? This shit is so sick, though. I, I picked this up in Salem, and shit's mad comfy. I wore this the entire, like, not the entire, but, like, most of the way home. Like, it was around my neck the entire way. I don't know. I just fuck with it. I fuck with it. For some reason, food. for some reason, my dumb ass looked at that and I was like, "Is that your new COVID mask?" He's like, oh, "Yeah, no. oh boy, my new COVID mask with my fucking holes in the front of it, so I can absorb all the fucking COVID." Yeah. <laughs> I uh, not, oh, I, I, it's not that I don't believe in COVID. I do believe in it, and I want to die faster. <laughs> <laughs> ah, true millennial. That's that's what I feel like. If you saw it, you'd say it's like a Hannibal Lecter thing, and I get it. It does kind of look like that. But I just, I don't know. The whole half mask thing is sick. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's just my style. I look like the Vore, but at the same time, I got my flow going, so it's pretty nice. Would you like to introduce this week's uh, film, considering it's your pick? This week's film is Jason Lynch, Friday the 13th Part 6, and it's my favorite fuck with it i i really love this movie like rewatching it i i wouldn't say i got i was like bored but it's like i've seen it so many times i'm like this happens this happens this happens so i like i'd be like okay okay come on it's coming it's coming yeah all right it's one of those things where you're just having a good time some stuff is boring but it's not like boring like i don't want to watch it's just like come on man i know what happens in two minutes got that bitch <laughs> yeah it's like when i'm sitting there waiting for you know, Tina get dragged up the wall on Nightmare on Elm Street. Like, yeah, you, I've seen the movie tens of billion times, but I enjoy sitting there with the anticipation of a scene I know I, I know was coming. This movie, because it's just a blast. This movie perfectly exemplifies why I like the Friday franchise. It's about new creative ideas that don't dilute the original material, but it steps way far from it. It has fun, and it says, "Hey." We're not trying to tell the best fucking story you could possibly tell, but you're going to get your money's worth out of this action, out of this fun, out of this enjoyment. And I say, yeah, you're right. That first movie, fuck that. This movie, joyride. Friday Part 6 is a joyride through and through. If you don't have fun with it, you're either just trying to find a reason not to, or you're just like, maybe it's just not your style. Whatever. Cool. Fuck you, but cool. I'm hitting hard today. I don't give a fuck, dude. I, I, it took me like hours to fix the audio on this shit. I had this goddamn fucking sun in the corner of my room blinding me, looking like a goddamn sweat stamp over here. I'm, I'm fucking throwing punches today. If you don't like this movie, fuck you. This is, this is pretty much the definition of like a uh, popcorn movie. Yes. You know, and it's kind of crazy because watching these all together. It is pretty apparent how just completely different this is, in far as far as tones con- concerned. Because like, let's fa- let's call it spade a spade. The first five of these, the tone's pretty malevolent. You know, there's obviously some fun. Obviously, you know, when, when you're in the scenes with the teenagers, when Jason's not around, they are you know good '80s fun. But whenever Jason's on screen, in those ones, it is played for pure terror. You know. Th- terror and thrills and suspense whereas in this one they're having way more fun this Uh, is this is pretty much this is a true horror comedy this is where the comedy starts to take place and i'll say this much when seven hits they say yeah dude we're gonna make it real comedic when he fucking shows up because rewatching that it's like you know when he grabs that girl and fucking throws her over the table (laughs) that's an awesome scene it's one of my favorite kills ever because the way it's just sold but there's just a scene every time where someone's down on the ground and he steps out like he steps away from a tree and he just goes you're dead bitch like you know it's the perfect thing for someone to just cut audio into being like you thought huh yeah you, so you can see it in his stance he's just like yeah I'm coming for your ass you're it's dead great. bro like the, yeah. the visual physical comedy is so good in this movie yeah, C- in 7 C- it's so great CJ Graham's underrated as fuck I remember discussing this with you a lot where we talk about our favorite Jasons and stuff. And, you know, I, I, I had my default answer was fucking Kane Hodder because I'm a fucking normie. But 
rewatching this, uh, actually rewatching two and four, I, I, I gained more appreciation for them, especially. But uh, here, I used to hate not the entire look of Jason in this, but I really didn't like the utility belt for a long time. Watching it now, shit's fire. So yeah. cool. Great design. Him when when his when his fucking mask is off and he's in the grave and he's reconstituting his body. <laughs> Amazing. Um and CJ Graham's actual physical performance, the comedy he brings to it is so good. Like it's it's so funny. And at the same time, you know, he'll have scenes where he actually does have to step up and be scary, especially towards the end. And he does a really good job at that, too. He's super underrated. I always hear people talk about, you know, Richard Brooker, uh, you know. Um, oh, fuck. Ted White. Ted White. Obviously, Kane Hodder. But CJ Graham needs more respect. Maybe I that's think- just me. Maybe i just not talking to the right people. But I always hear Richard Brooker, you know, Ted White and Kane Hodder more than anybody else. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, Kane Hodder gonna, especially. If you were going to ask me those three are the best i think cj yeah. graham's great but you know they're all good like there's not a single bad jason like hotter also benefited from having several movies to develop what he wanted to do as a character if we just count hotter in yeah. seven though he's still up there at the top he's so yeah good I mean, he's awesome in seven uh, but how much cool. of that well, i mean we'll get to that movie but yeah i, I was gonna talk more about it. i was like I, I it's next time dude yeah we'll, we'll get to it but I, I would love to have actually seen what CJ Graham would have done with another you film. To. I don't. I wouldn't have wanted to see him in Seven because I'm really glad with yeah. the way that Hodder did that movie that I don't want to see somebody else do it. But I would have loved to see what he could have accomplished as an as Jason again after I, having I agree. established himself. He was supposed to come back for Seven. The only reason he didn't is because the director really wanted Kane Hodder. So it's funny yeah. to think if they never hired that director, you never would have gotten Kane Hodder in any of the, the Friday films. He was yeah. just and he's, set on and it. And he, to, to most people, I think, uh, I would say actually not to most people in general in the, in, in the fandom, but I would say most people, when they think of Jason, they think of Kane Hodder. Yeah. I would probably say. I mean, he it also, again, benefits from the fact that he did four movies that were just him. So he kind of had the exposure that the other ones didn't because everyone else always did it for the video game yeah everyone always does it as a one-off yeah every every other single performer yeah i mean so sucks it does suck he cj graham is great it does just come to the fact where it's like when the guy who follows you is the guy you know yeah it is what it is it's too bad i I really do really appreciate what he brought to the role here he's just he's his physical comedy is so good, it, and it's, it's not just like, out of like, tone too. Things too. Because no, the whole the whole movie makes it makes sense. Yeah. Also, the tonal shift in these films makes sense. There's always yeah. comedy thrown throughout the bits of the films, and Jason being used for comedic effect happens in two and three a little bit. Four, he becomes more of a yeah. force of nature, and he becomes more straight on murderous and ill-intended, powerful. Yeah. Five takes that away from him. But six literally person. revives him. So with bringing yeah. that life into Jason, it makes him even stronger, even more deadly. But five has way too much comedic shit in it. With the five's nice thing level of-, of comedy, they have to put comedy in there. Well, who are we going to use for comedic? Some of the sheriff stuff, Hell sure. Dollars. But Jason. Yeah, I think that the great thing about this movie, as far as the comedy is concerned, is it is tied directly into the story. Yes. Because, I mean, look, you come back as a zombie, and, you know, apparently the electricity made him stronger. Part of the comedy is how much stronger he is and him not understanding that he's stronger, you know, and he grabs that guy by the arm and throws him against the tree and rips his fucking arm off or cuts three people's heads off in one swipe. That's the comedy. It's tied directly into the story, which is why it makes sense and it's okay. Don't, don't you miss actors just expressing things with the way they emote and not saying things like yeah it it works so well like you don't have to wonder what he's thinking you know what he's thinking. he's like holy fuck i'm better like <laughs> he's like i got even i can kill way more kids dude 
yeah same. and uh same thing with like even you know like when he's walking through he's brought back to life and you know he's killing people all the time and he comes across the rv in the woods and sees it you know rocking back and forth because you know teenagers will be teenagers i guess uh but they're you know he's watching the thing rock back and forth as two two people are having sex and he just cocks his head he's like what the fuck man why is it rocking so much and he just fucking goes in there and kills both of them man as the car's driving first off and that shit's awesome and he just fucking stands up out of the out of the the flipped rv on fire the rv's on fire and he's just like fuck yeah dude first of all they're both dead teenagers will not be teenagers sex before marriage is a sin don't forget that second of all thanks reverend he, he's literally built different <laughs> he's that, straight up built different. like he's literally built the, different. the best thing is like the first thing he does is rip a, a man's beating heart out of his chest yeah. i like the idea of him not meaning to do that just to punch him in the heart and be like i made it explode you fool and he's like wait i'm still holding this ew it's beating lame like, I love the idea of him not intentionally doing this stuff, and he's just like, all right, I'm just going to fucking super kill. Like, I'm just always in overdrive. Yeah, I think I think that really hits a... Um, I'm trying to figure out which one, to me, like, sells that the most between the triple... Uh, the triple uh, decapitation. No, before that. Like, yeah. when, when he's just like, he's finally just been like, yep, I am just that strong. When he fucking cuts three heads off at once, or when he shoves that lady's head through the fucking metal. Yeah. Which just like, that just sells it's like, that's it. He is just super Jason. It, like, he's just, just fucking like, murdering people. The stuff he does in this film, he could never have done in the other ones. Like, hell no. It's a completely different style of slasher movie. Like, it's, it's deliberately just, hey, I what? like this franchise. I want to take Jason and use him to his fullest extent. Let's have fun with this man. What with would you this say fucking is the monster. most brutal or strongest way to kill someone in, in four? Like, what's always like, oh, damn, that's a strong man. Strongest kill is when he probably crushes the guy's head. Yeah. So Or maybe when he reaches through the window and hurls the girl out the window. Yeah. Because she goes, she goes a pretty fucking good distance. So one of those two, realistically, someone could do that shit. You know? Yeah. Throw a couple steroids in a boy. He'll... He'll make himself a man real fast. Give him some bath salts. But in this one, like, he fucking pancakes a, a police officer. Like, Not just pancake. He fucking double deckered that motherfucker like, and split him in half. <laughs> like, <laughs> to turn That's another man, man into half. a pair of IHOP flapjacks is something that no man can do. And he just. It's done, awesome. And it's the end of the film. So he's just like. Fuck it, bitch! I'll do it again. Like he, you know, he knows he's that strong. He's like, who's gonna stop me, man? I'll flap jump all these motherfuckers. Fuck a cab, bro. Like well, it's like, and he, it's like he does that too. And when Tommy's goading him to come into the water, come you on, fucking, pussy. You a pussy? Back your head. Make Back your head. head. Or pussy. No, when he goads him into the water, <laughs> you see Jason just be like. <laughs> okay bro yeah. and he just walks into the water he's like i'll fuck you up let's yeah. go boy he walks in, he's like bitches want to swim i'll make them swim <laughs> i'm gonna drown your ass in this goddamn um, lake boy um, imagine if they went full on with like he's just the densest being in the world like you know how he jumps on to tommy and it breaks the boat what if tommy just split in half <laughs> like what if he does he, goes, <laughs> he just turns into flat stanley yeah it just like dude. oh my god this movie's so fucking fun, dude. I remember we were talking about this when we started, uh, when we did four, because I said how like four was my favorite, and it dropped down to two. Yeah, that bitch dropped down to three. Yeah, <laughs> six is just a hoop. So I, I mean, I always liked this movie. I always had a blast with it. But watching this, you know, this time around, man, it's just one of those movies where I feel like I could totally just take this, throw it in my Blu-ray player when I'm having a bad day, just have a good time. It would make me feel at least a modicum better. So what I want to do right now, we're going to switch into a segment. We're going to call this Kill Count, right? We're going to go over the kills, and I want you to rate 1 out of 10 the kill of every kill in this movie, all right? After you give oh, yours, I'll think about mine, see what I think, too. First I one. I dig this. 
Alan Hawks. Uh, Alan Hawks. <sighs> Heart beating out of the chest. Boom. Nine out of ten. Fuck yeah, nine Amazing. out of ten. Amazing. I'd Fucking almost amazing. go ten out of ten. I, w- I would almost go ten. Because it... Just, yeah, it's so fast. It's like an instant. Like, he turns around. Like, he turns so fast. It's like when your ex-girlfriend meets you and you say, Nice seeing you, bitch. And she fucking slaps you. But this man just says, Nice seeing you. You're literally fucking dead, fool. I ripped your heart out. Like, who does that? Come on, man. He didn't even say hi. It, it, it's kind of crazy. because like, fucking trouble. It's kind of like saying hi. Not, not related, but like... It's kind of funny that in the 80s we had this movie rip someone's fucking heart out in an R-rated movie and in a PG movie, Temple of Doom, had someone literally graphically rip someone's heart out for an extended period of time and light it on fucking fire. Dude, is it a vampire movie where someone rips a heart out and the dude... It's, uh, I think it's Robert Rodriguez. That's from Dust Dust Dawn. Dawn. They rip a heart out and the guy's still going at him and he just stabs. He's like, oh, fuck... I think that's the one. I think it is. It's like like Davy Jones from fucking Pirates of the Caribbean. So, next one. Second kill. Darren, the dude who pulls out the gun when they're driving the car. He gets stomach impaled with a fence post. What do you got for that? Gets stabbed, and then he fucking flings him. For the fling, I'll give it a 7.5. Yeah, I, I'll give it. I'll give it for a the seven. fling. I, I agree. The fling's cool. I don't cool. remember the fling, so I can't. I can't really visualize how good it was, but I remember that shit yeah. happening. For the fling, I'll I'll give that that. I'll give it seven point five. The extra point five for that. Number three, Elizabeth, mouth impaled with a fence post. That's the director's wife, Nancy. She offers him the money. He disappears, yeah. and then he just goes. It's got because her head's down the water. Whenever she fucking he fucking stabs it through the water. That's pretty cool. Uh, I gotta appreciate that they didn't need to show that whole thing. Yeah, so I like probably, the, I like the cinematography for it a lot. I'll probably still give it a seven point five. Yeah, I give but it. It, it doesn't need it doesn't need the fling to get to that, so it's better. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Bert, arm torn off and face smacks tree branch. Ten out of ten. Fuck yeah, dude. Ten, ten out of Bert. ten for. 10 out of 10 purely for the face hitting the goddamn smiley face. Yeah. The blood perfect. splatter with it. Fucking perfect. No, 10 out of 10 because of how much of a fucking prick he was leading up to that. And how how ultimately he deserved that death. Yeah, because they show him being a raging misogynist. And like, yeah, and they, goddamn and they just, woman should have stayed in the kitchen. It's like, okay. And okay, I'm not, I'm not one of those goddamn, you know, you know, uh, yeah, you fucking SJW. But like... I'm not, I'm not an SJW or something or whatever you want to call me. I'm not, you know, crazy about doing. I'm not an SJW. If I refer to myself as not an SJW, I sound even more like I'm a fucking douchebag. Yeah. But like, you know, I'm not. I'm not crazy about you know chasing everyone down about social justice related things. But if you're a misogynist in these movies, die. All I'm Just gonna die. say in this house, in this woods, we respect women. The next Beautiful. one is the Three Musketeers. You got Stan, Katie, and Larry, where they both get fucking triple decap. That's a solid 8.5. Yeah. It'd be better I, if I, you could see it, but they don't Yeah, I kind of wish it. I could see Not even like I have to see the whole goddamn thing, like blood spraying everywhere. Just, just a little bit more. I feel like, obviously, this movie was kind of eviscerated by the NBAA, but, you know, it, it would have been kind of cool to see what kind of effects they had up their sleeves for that. But it's cool. Really cool kill. Next Sticks one. out in your mind easily. Next one is Martin, where his throat is stabbed with a broken bottle. He goes, oh, you're going to be the death of me, and he throws oh, that, the bottle. That was kind of one of the one of the more shocking ones, I'd say, in the movie, as far as tone. Yeah, that one's dark especially, as fuck. Yeah, especially because it's like all these most of these kills. <laughs> Pretty funny. Yeah. That one's not very funny. No, it's dark as <laughs> um, well. But I'll say I like that mean streak to it. Um, it's also dark humor to it with the fact if he knows how he's going to die because of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. So I, I, I'd probably give it a 7. Yeah, I'll give it a 7 too. I don't think... I don't. I can't really change it because there's, there's not enough to it to make it better. But I think narratively it works well. I mean, I guess if it was more visceral and graphic... 
you know, a, a bottle kill could be pretty cool. Yeah, I, I'd oh, say. I, although, if it, do if I remember, it was blood shooting out, it'd be like 8.5. Do I, I was gonna say, like, I feel like for some reason I remember the bottle going into his neck and like blood coming through the bottle neck. I think it does come out of the bottle. That's but, pretty cool. But it's it's very fast. Yeah, if it was a little bit like it didn't feel like it was like the MPA is like you got to shave like 18 frames off that. Mm -hmm. like, you could have seen the full thing. I probably would give that 7.5, but that's pretty cool. The next one is Steven and Nett. It's the the couple that are getting engaged. And he's like, I thought you thought I was just gonna ask you to. Hmm. They get stabbed to the chest with the machete, like the double decker. That's pretty cool. The it, shish it's, kebab kill. It's kind of like a um, franchise end joke because that happens a lot. Yeah, I'll say uh, this much. Not a lot, but at least once. People it, die a lot with a machete the, in this series. This is the third time. And I think making it like a shish kebab with the machete for once, it's yeah. unique enough to not feel stale in this movie. Because the other ones were like more like um, spear, spear. There's another one too. Off the top of my head, I can't remember. I uh, someone else got they stabbed. They do in... it in three, I believe. Maybe. I can't remember three off the top of my head. But, um, yeah, I would probably give it 6.5. It's not like. It's not super duper original, obviously. It's like, I think, the third time they've done that type of kill. I know what I'm thinking. Four is when the girl gets stabbed in the boat through the back oh uh, yeah. yeah it's not the same thing but it's similar yeah it's not it's not a double kill no um maybe it's maybe it's just the second time then yeah but uh it's not like it's kind of the same same idea so i would say it loses a bit of a bit of luster for originality points yeah but I, it's still I, a, it's still a rock solid kill like it's still pretty good i would honestly give it a 6.5 how about yeah. you probably six fine i just like fine. the fact that the machete still feels unique i think it's more so it's just like maybe it's more so comparing to some of the other ones that are in here i would that it feels I like they're kind of going agree. back to the well a little bit that it kind of it's not even like it's bad like i, I like to kill it's just comparatively I, it's some, not nearly some of the, some of these other ones are just so cool like the next just kind of yeah it just kind of felt like they were like ah, we need another another kill because the next one, one stone is yeah. Nikki's face smash into the RV. 10 out of 10. Probably my favorite kill. Might be my favorite kill in the movie. 12 out of 10. Yeah. Fair. Perfect. Perfect kill. Honestly, perfect. The effect is amazing. It looks it's so good. Still, it's still amazing. It's so cool. So Yeah, sure. Her fucking head would be jelly, but I don't care. It's still fucking cool. Nah. Don't agree. Really weak steel. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Maybe it's aluminum. You never know. Yeah, yeah, true. Shitty RV. Get a new fucking car. But the next one. This is, might be divisive. Court's death. We get stabbed in the head. See, I'm two minds on it because the kill itself is kind of plain Jane. I mean, I like it. It's fine. Uh, but what happens after it? colors my enjoyment of that kill because it you know causes him obviously to drive off and, and flip the rv which is pretty sick 6.5 6.5 i'm i'm airing on the side of a seven i'm 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 close okay because because it's like looking at the kill in isolation without the car flip because that's my favorite part about it the kill itself is kind of just okay Whatever. In Whatever. isolation, I'll look at it in isolation. Hit you with this, eight point five. Really? So the reason is the camera work. You don't Fair. see him get stabbed, but after he gets stabbed, you see in the reflection him his eyes bulge, and then it before the flip even happens, you just see him laying there lifeless with it stuck in his head, and it's sold really well. I love the way the camera shot leading up to it and the aftermath. I love the fact you don't see him get stabbed, and I love how the music plays into it really well. I think the setup for mm -hmm. the kill and the end game for it are fucking perfect. And this is taking out the RV thing. With the RV, I'd be like a fucking 9.5. But without it, I still think it's a great fucking kill. It is plain Jane, but it fucking works. Seven point five. 
I'll take it. You want me over? With the car flip? Definitely 8.5. Car, this... car flip's best part. My opinion. And then Fine. Roy gets dismembered with a machete. He's the one who shoots him with the paintball and goes, he's gonna kill me! And then you see his fucking corpse. Yeah. I mean, you can't really... Can you count it? What do you mean? Like, quantify you, it? Like, could you quantify it as, like, giving it a rating since you don't see it happen? I mean, you see him run away. It, you see it, him get followed. It's, it's definitely tough to, tough, tough to give that a number. I don't know if I can give that a real, a real number. I'd agree. I'd say it's not really worth it. I mean, it's cool. It's fine. Yeah, it works. So then, then there's Sissy Baker, where the neck gets broken and then torn off. Mm. Eight. Okay, I guess it's pretty good. I'll give it a seven. I, I, I like the eight. neck being broken, but that was really it to me. And then there's Paula, where you see her body get hacked to pieces. You, know, you see the blood hit the window and shit. Oh, I fucking love that. That's you, gonna be like you don't see point. her die from it, but the blood splattering, and then she gets thrown out the window and shit. That's that's the thing. I, that, that's I, I would give it probably a nine, nine point five. Yeah, I, I would give it a nine. I think it's great. I fucking, I think that's awesome. It's really well done. It's really because you don't need to always fucking see shit like that. You know, as, well, as long as it's well framed and the sound effects are good enough and, you know, um, I mean, the, the throw through the window part, that definitely helps, too. It's just uh, it's just funny, though. Like, I love the idea of him slashing her and then he throws it through windows. Like, Get back here. Like, like a scorpion. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. so funny. I definitely I definitely really like that kill. <laughs> Next one is Officer Thornton, a metal dart thrown into the head. See, I want to give that a higher score because of the game. Yeah. But I'm not going to. Six. Six. It's fine. It's cool. It's fine. But it's not something that wowed me or anything. Officer Papa's head crashed. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I'll probably give that a eight. I'll give it a seven. Seven and a half. There's better ones afterwards, but even there, the one from four is better. I was say there's better head crushes in the series. That's the thing. Yeah. And then Sheriff Michael Garris, back broken. Ten out of ten. Ten out of fucking ten. Fuck that pancake bitch. It's cut. It's cut a bit. You know, you, you could tell it was kind of edited around a bit. Yeah. But the sound effects sell it. It's so funny. I, I love and the it. effect you can you can see his body snapping in the background. It's just like no, nah, it's pretty cool. It, I just love the idea of like, he he's like what are you doing? He's like, oh. <laughs> he's like you know, that is nothing but a power move. A hundred percent. It's just Jason sitting over here like I hope that bitch finds her dead, yeah. broken a fucking half. I fucking got him. I fucking got him. And that's that's the end of the kill count. That's it. That's all the kills. That's how it goes. Most of them are great. I mean, there's not many that... For, there's not a bad kill. No. Not. I mean, by de facto, the, <clears throat> the two off-screen kills are the least interesting, but they're off-screen kills. Yeah. But we can't really grade it, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I even like Roy's death, though, like, with the... He's gonna kill me! And then he's like, oh, he's fucking dead. He killed him. Yeah. <clears throat> I think one of, one of, like, the lower deaths is definitely the, the dart head. Yeah. But it's still, it's still fine. Just appreciate, you know, the high body count. I just think, all especially in this era of, of slasher movies too, because most of them get absolutely bodied by the NBAA. They just absolutely fuck. This one and the next one are them. definitely the worst culprits of that. It really sucks for seven. It really sucks. I saw the kills too. Yeah. They have them on the extras, and I'll talk about them next episode. But ooh, I didn't know that. Some of them are really good. Some of them, I'm not. I'm not upset about missing, honestly. Mm, 
It's but like most two. of them would be better if they were in there. A good majority. It's kind of like two, where uh, a couple of them you're like, yeah, it's pretty cool, and then the other ones you're like. Mm. I would only put in one or two. The other ones are not necessary in two. Yeah, the other ones you, you, you can't access, and thank God you can't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the, this one though, like, I wish we could have just gotten the three-headed de- decapitation. I, I would have loved to have seen what that would have been. It would have just made it. I also, a I also want to know if there was actually more for the the the. the the body, the the folding kill, and I would have wanted to see what that looked mm-hmm. like. If there was more effects for it, um, we're uh, kind of moving on to a different topic here. I, we're we're not going to do a, hu- a huge, uh, you know, musical review here, but we got to talk about Alice Cooper's fucking song, man. Oh man, behind the mask. Yeah, it's fire. He's bad. That's so cool. And it's like this is the era where they had, you know. Uh, Alice Cooper did a song for this. Dokken did a song for fucking Dream Nightmare. Wars. Yeah, yeah, and it was really cool to get these two two uh, bands to do music for at least two of the big three. M- Halloween never got one. Uh, thank God. Halloween sequels are very far between. It's also also Halloween's. Halloween doesn't have the kind of there, there's nothing to really make a song about. In, in comparison, you know, there, there's a very, very <laughs> to whole be, point about. To be fair, though, there's not much to make a song about for Dream Warriors, but they still did it. Yeah, but you can still discuss Dream Theory and you know, like discuss you know the fantasy aspects of Dream Warriors in a song. Whereas, and, and with with Jason, it's all about the fact that he's dead and back to life. Yeah. In Halloween, really, there's the whole point is there's nothing to talk about with Michael Myers because there's no character. Um, so like, where are you gonna make a song about that? <laughs> Make sense. I don't think you can make a rock song, but I think you can make like a fucking like depressing blues song. Then again, Angela has a theme from Sleepaway Camp, so who fucking knows, man? Madman Mars is a fucking song. That's the only reason people like that movie. I'm I'm sure. I'm convinced. It. I'm convinced that's the only reason because there's nothing else. The about song it that's is good. cool, but it's gotta be the only reason. And the concept is good. I like the idea. Of <laughs> you Mars. you immediately you're like, and the concept is. Wait, hold on. Is it good? Wait, wait, wait. You, you were debating before you opened your mouth, like, in the concept, fuck. Yeah, it's more so because now I'm thinking about Madman. Um, but the concept's yeah. fine. It's not original, but you could do fun stuff with it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a basic riff on the whole, you know, um, Cropsy Tale that the burning did much better. Uh, but yeah, like the Alice Cooper song for this man, it's it's in my main playlist. I, I listen to that a lot. You know, when it comes on, I blast the radio when I'm driving. I bought that on Apple years ago. Because, like, with my car having Bluetooth now, I'll just, like, sometimes not put on Spotify. I'm like, well, let's see what happens randomly. That bitch comes on a lot. And I'm just like, think I'm going to skip it? Like, fucking stupid? No, I'm not going to skip it. Every time that, that he's back or Dream Warriors comes on, I can't skip it. Because they're just fucking cool, man. It's so cool, like... More, more fucking theme songs for for horse for slasher villains, please. We're lucky in general that they have such all the big three have powerful themes. Oh, 100 percent. Like, if I told you Freddy Krueger, you know that melody is hitting in the back of your head. Halloween's is easily got, the most got, iconic. He's got more than one fucking uh, Freddy Krueger. You can listen to just the normal song, the, you know, the normal score part, or one two phrase coming for you automatically yeah. pops up. Sense. Jason, I think you know, the, I you know, think the melody, like the, the bum, do, bum, do, bum, do. Bum. yeah, yeah, and you get, you get Jason, go, you get, everyone knows, kill, 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 ma, 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 yeah, everyone knows it, everyone yeah. fucking knows it. When it shows up, they, they don't even have to have seen a Friday the Thirteenth movie, they know it. Also, the score for this movie is pretty good. Yeah, it has a little bit more like um, under, it's more underappreciated because the toning is very different. Yeah. With it being set in more of like a, it was set in Georgia, and they kind of worked around that atmosphere. It does feel almost kind of like more gritty, more dirty, because most of the other themes, like the most well-known theme, is the one in three. Three score is the most prominent, and yeah, everyone that, knows has, disco. that has a lot more energy disco. to it. Everyone knows the disco theme. Yeah, that's true. It's not, it's not my fa- It's I not mean, my favorite. I, I think the actual scoring in the movie, without like the theme, obviously, it's really it's pretty good. Really fucking good. I'd say it might be the best. My favorite's two. Uh, two's really good. Four yeah. is good. Actually, actually, I fucking love four. 
I think four is okay. I, I like four, but I feel like it's not as impactful. After we discuss, actually, I feel the opposite because after we discussed, I was listening to it, and it feels a lot more um, epic than other ones. Because I I own this one. I I own six. I have the yeah, of course. I have that for like a two LP vinyl. for vinyl, and it's great. I love putting it on. It sounds like you're listening to Friday, and it's really good. But it's different. I'd say this is very different from the rest of the other ones. And this is the last one that Manfredini for the Paramount 8, I believe. I don't think he did 8 in general. But 7, most of the music in 7 that is his is just compilation music that he did before. And they had a new composer do it. And you yeah. can tell that Manfredini is still on 6. He's going full out being like, we're going to try to hit this, try to hit that. It's going to be different, but it's going to have flavor. And it works well. Yeah, I agree. Good score. Really good score. He's never done a bad one yet for Friday. He's done different ones. He's had... They're unique, but man, they they just fucking hit. Yeah, I agree. It is kind of wild about three. I mean, off topic, but it is kind of wild about three that the theme is disco and then the rest of it's just not. No, it's not. It's just wild. I love, I love the score in that movie. I that, had someone compare that to me too, like uh, to Halloween two, with this, the synth. It was like the whole the whole score is synth. It's not comparable. Yeah, the entire score is synth. Is it is it a complete outlier in the franchise? Yeah. Yeah, like but the entire thing. It's not just the Halloween theme that's, that's like that. So it is different for sure. Yeah, but like Threes is its most prominent theme. That'd be like, it's like, oh, it's kind of like that. It's really significantly different. Yeah, if, it's kind of hard synth, if you listen to. If the synth was the most famous aspect of that movie, sure, but it's not. You have yeah. a better off chance comparing the score in Halloween or the score in Friday Three to the original score in Halloween because it's the most famous. Yeah, I'm not saying it's comparable. I think a lot it's about three is a lot about three is probably most famous about the franchise just considering yeah. how it's how iconic Jason looks. I think the more I watch it, the more I understand why people like three more and more. I, I think yeah. it's like a, a slow it's building fine. thing that I start to like it more and more as I get used to it. I have an appreciation that kind of just builds. I don't have to appreciate six more. It's my best. It's not much yeah, more to I mean, appreciate. I mean, I guess I, I technically appreciated it more this time around because it obviously moved up. But, like, I've always thought this was dope. Like, Yeah. I guess I just, um, when the last time I watched it, I just wasn't... Um, thinking about how the tones came together so much as just having a good time and when you're watching it and you're thinking more critically about it and you notice how everything blends together and you notice the little things about like cj graham's performance and, and we didn't even talk about tom matthews yet tom matthews is dope as tommy jervis he's so likable uh, he's so he's kind of he's not childish in a way where he's immature but he seems very much like he doesn't understand how stupid he sounds as an yeah. adult saying these things, it's like, oh, Jason's gonna do this. It's like, you're a grown ass man, dude. That sounds dumb. And the reason he gets put in in jail is because he's like, well, I'm just trying to help people. It's like, yes, but no one would assume that. Yeah. Yeah, I love. I, I think Tom Tommy Jarvis. Uh, I think Tom Matthews as Tommy Jarvis. I mean, it's he's the most iconic version of the character next to maybe Crispin uh, Crispin Glover. Uh, next to Corey Feldman. Um, I actually, no, I would probably argue that he might be the most iconic version of the character. I would consider them even. If it, if it was anyone besides Corey Feldman, he would easily be the most iconic, but it's just Corey Feldman is so popular, especially in that time period. Yeah. Like, if I was going to ask somebody who's who grew up in the ages, be like, well, who's Tommy Jarvis? You're probably going to say Corey Feldman. Probably. It's just to me, he uh, Tom, maybe it's because of how much we played the Friday Thirteenth game. Yeah. Yeah, you know, over summers we would just play it till five in the fucking morning. Yeah. Um, and we played as Tommy a lot, and it was obviously Tom Matthews. Yeah. Uh, if you ask me, who Tommy Jarvis he's definitely is, who I think he's of. the first one I think of instantly. Yeah, he's definitely the one I think of when I think of Tommy Jarvis, easily. And I mean, like, I just love Tom Matthews in general. I think he's just a fucking treasure. In 80s movies, he's I mean, great. like I love Every, everything I he's love in. Him. I've seen him and I, I've loved. Yeah, like I love him in fucking uh, Return, Return of the Living Dead. Dead. He's so funny. I fucking love him in that. Don't eat uh, your brains. Eat your brain. He's just fucking asking, just bugging the guy questions at the table. 
You can't kill these guys through the head. You gotta fucking. There's no way to end these people. So another thing I want to lay out is, I've watched seven. Maybe watching seven will change your mind on some things, but. My biggest problem that I've been going through for picking favorites or moving things around is that I like individual things about each movie a lot. There is no film that is, out of all these films, the end-all be-all, and that's my biggest problem. I love Six. It's my favorite. I wish there was better character work. Yeah. I love sure. Two for the character work. I wish there was more excitement, and I wish I liked the Jason in there a lot more. I love Seven because I love the energy and I love the fun. And Jason. And Jason, I love the leads. There's not nearly enough character. There's not nearly enough suspense. So there's so many good individual things, and these three especially. Four would be, by many, considered the total package, but there's a ra- there's so much random bits thrown out. Oh, like like we went into that whole thing, there's a whole, a whole level of how that movie's kind of just been soured for us now. Yeah. A little bit. So, it... It's hard to take that out of your brain when you're watching it. Yeah, on the movie's merits of itself, I would probably say it's the closest. Yeah, there's a whole all-around package to it, but there's... I would personally say two is, but I find that movie more exciting than you, and I like that Jason more than you. Yeah. So, that's why I would consider that to be, like, the most perfect... Friday the 13th movie, especially in tone. It's also still a camp movie. Um, whereas, you know, for a period of time, it's not being a camp movie. But, yeah, I mean, Six has its issues, you know. I, I wish that the camp counselors had more to do outside of just um, uh, Megan. Outside of Megan, Megan has the most development out of all of them. Although, I'll say, um, oh, what's her name? Ooh, you know, I got something I want to bring up. The, the girl, the girl who, the girl who's like talking to the, uh, to little Nancy. Paula, I believe it is. Paula, yeah, she's pretty good. I'll, I'll, she's I'll really say good. That yeah. Of of the, of the two, other counselors, or three other counselors, uh, she probably has the most to do just because she ha- she does have those kind of sweet moments with Nancy, that kind of bolster her as a character and make you kind of feel bad when she dies. But like, there's no character for Court. Court's funny. Don't get me wrong. I he love Court, but yeah, he's not a character. He's a hundred percent just a stereotype. He's a, he's just a joke character, and that's fine. He's funny as hell. Um, say, but like Missy is kind of just there. Yes, sissy. Yeah. Sissy. Why yeah. did I say Missy? Yeah. But sissy. yeah, she's just kind of there. Sadly, it, it's funny. So. Almost my idea of what I consider to be a perfect Friday the Thirteenth movie. Fear Street, nineteen seventy eight. Yeah, it om- it almost is the perfect Friday movie. The Jason yeah. has character to him, so all the deaths mean a lot. The character work in it is great. The setting, Those are fucking gnarly. The setting is perfect with camp counselors and stu- with students. Like the actors are all really good. It's all a lot of fun. It's all a lot of energy. The Lord needle drops fantastic. are a little annoying. The biggest problem in that movie is the kills. Some of those are fucking gnarly. Some of them are, but they're few and far between. And... There, there's just a there's a lot of them. Yeah. And they usually boil down to the same thing because of how rapidly people just drop. If it wasn't rapidly. connected to the series and it was a standalone movie, it, the kills would have been better. You could have done more, and I think it yeah. would have worked better. But as that movie is, it is almost like the. It's not perfect, but there's, it's a really great Friday film in its own way. Yeah, and it's it's trying to be. It's a hundred percent trying to be. Because because it really leans into the camp aspect of of uh, Friday the Thirteenth that it's been lacking. You know, even when they even when they had the opportunity to remake the movie, they didn't bring it back to the camp setting outside no. of a uh, brief uh, discussion. Intro. Yeah, you know, they had a lot of opportunity to bring it back to that, you know, traditional Friday the Thirteenth, and they did not. They did. They did more of the Friday the Thirteenth Part Four, or the Part Three, or the Part Seven. Yeah. Um, part which is Six fine. is the first one to really try to bring it back. Yeah, which is fine. Don't get me wrong, but uh, the fa- that's one of the things actually a lot of people bring up about Six. Not only is it back to being a camp movie, but this is the first time that the kids ever made it to the camp. Yeah. The kids are there, which honestly, for the third act, adds a lot of urgency. 
a lot of tension, especially when without, he, with, he goes with, towards the kids. To, to dare say, without a lot of effort for, for the writers or directors, other than saying, hey, the children are here automatically if you're a human being. Yeah. You're more concerned because the kids are in danger now. Because they're defenseless in comparison. And it does lead to to some some actually kind of really funny comedy. Like, I really do laugh pretty hard when the little kid says, well, what did you want to be when you grew up? Like, yeah, I mean, like, I can't picture a fucking kid actually thinking about saying something like that, but it's fucking funny. Yeah, it works for the film very well. Yeah, it's completely in tow with the movie. Especially because earlier on they set up that kid being a goofball and saying things that probably most children that age probably wouldn't say you know calling court on his bullshit most kids at that age would probably be like oh my god i didn't know that and it's just like okay dumbass um but yeah it's pretty funny that that kid dropped that i thought like especially because that that sequence had been super duper tense because you know jason's stalking the grounds he's picking cops off um you know tommy's preparing his ultimate you know manner of handling jason and these kids are just sitting there they're 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 fishing a barrel if jason busted into that cabin they're fucking toast if he wanted to kill them yeah which they don't really a few times yeah like they don't really showcase he has desire to kill children so maybe they weren't in danger who knows but we'll never know no we don't that's the, the the filmmaking is really smart in this movie like yes obviously the shot and choreography for things is very well done a lot of the time but it's all really well thought out by McCall. it is like the director knew he wanted to have fun with the film but it had to make sense and it had to ask questions that you as an individual viewer could answer do you yeah. think he would kill the kids person do you think he would no there you go I, I think he I think in some way, shape, or form, this is complete headcanon. There's absolutely nothing to support this. Yeah. But I think he still associates himself as a kid. I think in this movie, it is intended to think he would kill the kids. I think it would break character. I, I think he shouldn't ever kill kids. But I think the way it's... The way CJ Graham plays him in that scene, he looks very much intended to kill that child until somebody else makes a noise. Actually, you know, the more I think about it, you know, I've always thought about um, moments in characters' lives that changed them mentally and and their thought process on things. Being brought back to life would fundamentally change him as a character. Yeah. He's not the same person. He could be a mostly unfeeling character outside of him looking and be like, wow, I just someone's arm off and threw him into a fucking tree that's kind of crazy isn't yeah. it and that's um, why I said it's out of character but, but at the same time he is a zombie <laughs> yeah so it's like he is kind of rebro- reborn as a different character so our expectations on the character of Jason kind of shift so would pre-death Jason kill a child probably not I don't know we we have no we have no way he to kinda know want, he kind of wanted to kill Tommy but he deliberately chose to chase his sister. Yes. He could have killed Tommy. He didn't. Is that because he just was like bigger target? Or is it because he doesn't want to kill children? We don't know. But at the same time, it doesn't matter. He was reborn, honestly, essentially, after being resurrected. So who knows? He may be a complete just absolute killing machine now. And that's kind of the... the um, the balance that McLaughlin walks is that you don't know. No. You don't know what he's thinking. You never know. He might have killed that kid. You never know. But luckily, Tommy and Megan let that not happen. It's it's very interesting because I think most viewers that view this series would have the the idea that Jason probably wouldn't kill children. But there's there is pretty much evidence in the films that would say he would. There is evidence that would showcase he's not opposed to doing it. There's no real evidence saying that, like, he would avoid kill- killing children. You know what I mean? It just seems... I think the viewer wants to have Jason be sympathetic. And I think a lot of the films 
the the origin is so sympathetic that the idea of him being just some ruthless piece of shit, we as a viewer don't want to associate that. We want to have him have some redeeming qualities, but in the films, how much really adds I mean, to that? Whole, that's the whole basis to how Freddy vs. Jason kind of hits its climax, is that it's building a sense of sympatheticness to Jason so that we can get behind Jason and want Jason to be Freddy. Yeah. So he it's is kind a of the more likable thing. character. So I'll cop out. I think that if Jason was a real person, he would definitely kill a child. I definitely don't think the writers would let him kill a child. No. Because that's kind of a no-no in, in, in horror, especially slasher movies. It's kind you of see, a no-no. Three is the thing that walks a line. He kills a, a pregnant woman. Yes. There's so a technically child. Technically, he it. kills a kid. Does he know? Does he, does he know, does he know she's, she's pregnant? pregnant? Fuck that. Exactly. Probably not. Ninety-nine point nine percent. No. He probably doesn't understand the concept of pregnancy. No. So. But I, I don't. I don't think that he would knowingly kill a child. I, I. I think he would knowingly kill a child. Actually, I should say. I think the character would fucking absolutely eviscerate a kid. But. I don't think for a second that a writer would ever do that. that and I don't think an audience ever wants to see that. No. That's Most of the, like, sometimes people will be like, it's interesting to watch Hollywood kind of walk over that line every once in a while where they'll do something that they don't usually do to surprise you. And sometimes it really comes out as shock value. I feel like sometimes when Hollywood rides that line, it becomes either a little bit more alluring for people um, or it can go the complete opposite direction and, and revolt people. Have them just say, "I'm off this. No way." Yeah, and that's the thing. You might be How attracting you new Jason? audiences, or you might be attracting some audience, or you could be totally killing off your audience. That was this was intended for. Yeah, I mean, like even bringing it back to the horror genre. Um, look at the Freddy Nightmare Kruger. remake. Freddy Krueger. Exactly. That's yeah. exactly what I was going to talk about. How? Well, actually. I will take the remake out of the equation because the remake is going for a very different tone. Although I will say the the way it poses its main mystery is irresponsible as far as knowing the character of Freddy Krueger in that film. But the original idea for Freddy Krueger was always that he was a child molester yes. and killer. And they deliberately did not put that in the original because at the time they were having a lot of those kinds of cases. And they didn't want to push the envelope too far. Killing children, that's bad enough. Objectively. Adding the molestation aspect to it is arguably a little bit too much. Um, so they just didn't bring that back. How are you going to get to the point that we got in, say, like, Nightmare 3? Or Nightmare 4, if you like Nightmare 4? Where we're kind of not exactly just on Freddy's side so much because we, we care about the main characters too but we also like seeing Freddy on screen because he's fun how do you have fun watching a character when you know that character molests children you can't oh yeah I, I would say fun. it's that's an easy question you cannot exactly nobody so, can side with the child molester <laughs> That's a little bit more. I don't know if it's a little bit more extreme. Just I think it's a very comparable bad. thing, though. Like, but, but also now you think about it, though. <laughs> We're talking about Jason killing children. How do you have fun watching Jason if he kills children? You can't. We had fun watching Freddy Krueger after he killed children. So. You never see him kill children, though. True. That's true. the thing. Uh, but at the same time, you know he's a child murderer. We all know that. Yeah. Um. But, but it's his, a little, I guess it's a little charisma. bit different. When you Jason's see it. an entirely different being. Jason killing yeah. children doesn't go against his origin, but it fights the likability factor that the origin builds on him. The best thing about the original Friday is is the lore they build creating Jason Voorhees. He has a sympathy to him. It builds sympathy to a character that doesn't even exist until the last five seconds of the movie. Obviously, facetious, yeah. it's in like the last five minutes, but still. That's, yeah, that kind of. Si that kind of sympathy kind of bleeds away yeah. if you have him kill children. And, and that's what Minor really attacks on for making Jason unlikable. When Minor has two and three, they don't want him to be a likable character. They try hard yeah. to be like, well, we're going to make her pregnant because if Jason kills her, he looks like a bastard. You're not supposed to like this guy. 
You're supposed to yeah. like these characters that he's killing. And that's why the character work in 2 and some of the characters in 3 hits really hard because Steve Miner wants you to like those characters. He doesn't want you to like Jason, but as time goes on and he becomes more of a force of nature, you know, let's have fun with him. He's, he's likable. He's a really relatable guy. We all have our Jason in our lives. That's kind of the weird thing about the 80s, too, because even in slasher films, because we, you know, we went through the whole the whole phase of, of action films where we had these likable protagonists, you know, the, the Sylvester Stallones, the, the Schwarzeneggers, where they would just come up and they would just mug the screen and they would just be instantly likable characters. And you want to have those characters and go on journeys with them. They did the same thing with horror films at that point. They yes. wanted icons rather than just villains. Yeah, we, we've gone on to a whole spiel about it, it, there's no horror icons anymore. That's because they don't you, build the same way. If you look at Jason versus, say, most slasher characters, uh, slasher killers in non-franchise slasher movies, those movies are really what people think of when they think of slasher movies about how it's mostly about hey I want to see people just get absolutely eviscerated they can't really play Jason like that if they want to sell him as an icon no it's very different with how you look at Jason Voorhees how you look at Michael Myers people yeah because like they tried the to idea. do the same thing with Michael Myers and it didn't work people like the idea of Michael Myers being an unstoppable being that kills people but it's not the character they like they just like the idea of this unstoppable murderer who is a force to be reckoned with people genuinely like the character of Jason Voorhees because he's origin sympathetic yeah. we like the idea of like you know this kid just got picked on and he got murdered but he's getting revenge on that the idea of this kid that just had a terrible life and was ended shortly because people didn't care about him, that fucking sucks. To know he goes back and he comes back, it's like, good, he deserves he deserves it. He's killing random people. Okay, we got we got a gray line now. We gotta talk about this. Yes, it's not like these that's the thing. People look at these characters like they're supposed to die, they're pieces of shit. They aren't pieces of shit, but at the same time, this dude just, we feel bad for him. <clears throat> we feel bad when he kills people, but we aren't ready to write off Jason. We're not going to be like, Jason is the Antichrist. We can't do that because we feel bad for the man. That's yeah. why minor stories tie the line very well, because we're we're feeling bad. We don't like Jason, but there's still something that just clings on. We're just like, ah. Uh, yeah, I know the subtext is that he might have raped that girl, but I believe he didn't do that, so I don't hate him as much. Okay, I don't hate him that much, but he killed the boyfriend. Uh, he's not a nice guy, but damn it, it's hard not to love him. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of the difference between him and Michael Myers, is just that one of them's a character and one of them's whole concept is about the absence of character. So exactly. it's easier to latch on to Jason. So when you get to a, to a part of the franchise like this, where you're trying to make it more of a a popcorny kind of event, you know, crowd pleaser slasher. It works more so than if you tried to do that with Michael Myers, it would not work. Well, they or, tried to do that with Michael Myers and it didn't work. Even with with um Freddy Krueger, Freddy Krueger, we don't like the origin. It's not the setup of the character we like. We like his charisma. The yeah. factor. They also they also consistently downplay. As the series goes oh, on, for sure, the... it's not a surprise. <clears throat> yeah, they, they, they you start a lot of stuff. Mention about the kids he murders. It's like, yeah, fuck this asshole. <laughs> yeah, it, it becomes you're, all you're about hate me. You're gonna hate that me for this entire... comparison. <laughs> What's up? You're gonna hate me for the comparison I'm gonna make, but he's very much like Leprechaun. Like, it's not the origin. No, you're right. It's not the origin. It's just the charisma factor says I'm gonna follow him and let's see what happens. Let's get some hijinks. I mean, we're, we're on a tangent, but that's kind of why the remake doesn't work. Yes. It's because, like, the origin is so <clears throat> integral to that movie, and how it's like, oh, was he killed? Was he wrongly killed? Oh, no. You know, did we accidentally fuck up? And, you know, we were kids. Did we lie about this fucking guy molesting us and, you know, torturing us? That's kind of an irresponsible kind it's of story to tell. incredibly irresponsible. I mean, that's, that's pretty much everything... <clears throat> It's, it's not necessarily... 
I don't know how to put that. It's just that you it's know, tone deaf. It is you tone don't, deaf. You you don't write a story where you're gonna shed doubt. No, on. also you don't have survivors second guessing themselves. Yes, because you know I don't know if that maybe you know I'm, I'm obviously not. I can't speak from a place of knowledge, uh, firsthand knowledge of stuff like that, but it kind of just rings as dirty it does. to to do that so that's why that movie just does not work and, and we can call this it, a and tangent. that's its central that's its central con- conceit that's yeah. the central conceit of the and film. we can call this a tangent we say oh we're you know we're getting off basis we really aren't because it does circle back around because six really does deconstruct the idea of jason as a character you know, Six wants to introduce other aspects like him having a father, which it thankfully doesn't do, but this resurrection resurrects Jason. Does it resurrect the character? No. In the things he does, it is completely different. It is out of character, in an essence. Is him going around killing teenagers on Crystal Lake out of character? Fuck no. It's it, But you could just say... He's sentient in the fact that where he's just like a, a fucking undead bodyguard. Yeah. But do we believe him and two, three, and four are like that? In aspects, yes. In other aspects, no. We talk a lot about in two and three the human moments. In yeah. four, there's a lot less human moments. But like we say, every film, the more he kills, the less human he becomes, but we still feel like that's which, still a which, person there. Which honestly logically makes sense. Yes. We still feel like it's a person doing those killings though in 4. In 6, yeah. from the get-go, we know it's not a person. He's a very different scent. He's a very different being. Like, Yes. His personality. He has, well, he has personality. Yeah. Th- this is very different from any of the other horror sequels and how they attack things or handle things. First of all, they don't backtrack on it. This Jason is how he fundamentally is. I mean, X, obviously, he acts a lot like the way he is in 7. 8, he acts very similar to it, too. Goes to hell, he doesn't, but fuck that movie. He's also barely He's also barely in the movie. Yeah. So, but this is how Jason fundamentally is after 6. 6 changes the character and... As a viewer, we fundamentally think of the way he is after six. Yeah, I agree. It's very, it's very crazy to think how. It's kind of like how, like in Frankenstein, we all pick and choose how we see Frankenstein. How pop culture chooses how he goes. He walks like this. He's never done it in the originals. We all visualize Boris Karloff, but we choose things that. Bella Lugosi did as Frankenstein, or Lon Chaney may have done. What a great segue into one of my favorite parts about the movie. All the parallels with Frankenstein. Exactly. It's pretty lit. Karloff gas station. He's literally resur- he's really lizard literally brought to life with lightning. You know the whole it's alive. You know, brought it back, bringing the guy, the, the dead guy back to life. You know, obviously, McLaughlin talks at length about how much he's influenced by Frankenstein. And it shows. Yeah. Frankenstein is the perfect template. I mean, so many things in media have taken from Frankenstein. The fucking Godzilla films take from Frankenstein. Also, like, like, also funnily enough, both movies ended in fire. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean... Not exactly the same context, but pretty cool. No... But in a way, fire is the undoing of Frankenstein, so it's his fear as the same way water is Jason's fear. So it's yeah. like they use their greatest weapon against them to end them. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's, it's very obvious that McLaughlin is a fan of this genre. Yeah. And wanted to make a, a film that feels of the genre while also having a really good time. I, I love when horror films feel like they respect the genre and they feel like they're harpening back to it. It's the same reason why we as viewers have so much fun watching Monster Squad or why the, the fun little things they talk about in American Werewolf are so enjoyable to ingest as a viewer. It's yeah. not... I'm not shitting on screen, but it's not like it's poking fun at the viewer in essence, but at the same time adds to it because that's the entire point of Scream. This is yeah. stuff that says like, 
you're gonna understand this because you respect this genre and you're like you're right i am gonna respect it i am gonna love it and i'm gonna have fun when i eat this fucking popcorn the, the nice thing I'm, I'm sure we'll review it eventually but the nice thing about scream is that it it's a movie that's built to play with your expectations of the yes. genre because it does lay into certain aspects of that genre while also completely subverting those expectations of the genre like like the whole virgin is the one who lives literally before the finale of scream sydney loses her virginity yeah and still wins it's like that's a whole subversion of that whole idea not not original clearly you know no. part two does that but yeah no but it is definitely the whole point about works. the movie is the whole point about the movie is it's it's meta and it's common yeah on those the things. reason scream works is because it brings about things that we as horror films associate with these type of slasher films and it yeah. works sometimes against the audience and sometimes it works for the film or yeah. vice versa there it's very smart film but in in a lot of ways you don't really know what to expect on a first viewing and that's why it works yeah. the problem with scream is what it changed for the genre afterwards scream wasn't the problem it's scream copycats that became the problem it's the idea oh, of yeah, meta of horror in general as a problem slick slasher movies like that yeah. i don't hold that against scream i just hold that against the 90s that's, that's just hollywood in general hey yeah. look this trend made a lot of money let me chase it yeah superhero movies exactly you know first and foremost and i'm waiting i'm waiting for horror to come back in a way that mimics shit from superhero movies i already tried yes i know with the, the universal horror monsters but like when it they bring work, more thankfully. slashers back there's going to be elements that they take from those type of films and it's going to fucking what? dilute it i wouldn't mind seeing another versus movie of some kind, from some from some franchise to another franchise. I'm surprised it hasn't happened yet. I mean, it has technically overseas, but you know, Sadako yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, versus. But that's um, a parody type film. Yeah, it, it, it's a joke, but they they did technically do that. Like, technically, two thousands happened. Versus, Freddy versus Jason is technically a fucking joke. Yeah, well, Freddy versus Jason, Alien versus Predator, like if these films came out in not the 2000s they could be fucking awesome films it's kind of funny because it's like we had those two movies and then like almost a decade later no a little a little over a decade later we had like civil war and batman v superman yes and one of those is a billion dollar movie and it's just like could you imagine and the other one is dog shit oh fuck did i say that <laughs> Shit, did I say that? Fuck, I did. But like, could you imagine if in that landscape we got something? No, yeah, but again, we also do have to think about like how relevant a lot of these characters are. I mean, like we're getting to a point now, like we it have should have happened a very, in the eighties. We have like a very, very successful Halloween franchise right now. Yeah, they're bringing back Child's Play. They're bringing back Scream. They're bringing back fucking Exorcist now. Not that that's gonna cross over with something. They're bringing but, back the Universal monsters. Bring back Universal Trying. Monsters. <laughs> they're gonna hopefully, if Victor Miller and Sean Cunningham ever figure out their bullshit, they're gonna finally bring back Friday. So they're never bringing back Friday. Yep. The, uh, Craven's Estate's taking constant pitches for a new Nightmare movie, so that's gonna happen eventually. They're gonna finally find something that they like. It, it so just, all these characters are gonna start coming back, and it's just like you gotta think that they're gonna have something, some kind of an inkling of an idea to do something. I agree. Evil Dead's coming back too. Evil Dead's returning. As well. I agree, but the problem is, I look at it the same way I look at it with the Universal horror movies, and, and you know, Monster Squad may make an argument for why you can do it later on, but. It'll never work in the, the way that they should have capitalized with the universal horror of having these monsters getting together in the 30s. By the 40s, yeah. the genre was already diluted to a point where, like, you haven't seen House of Frankenstein, you haven't seen House of Dracula, right? If those movies yeah. came out in 1936 and 1937, they would have been must-sees. The tone would have been yeah. different. Obviously, the Wolfman wouldn't have happened, but... The problem, the problem winds up being though, is that like the landscape of Hollywood has changed so much, and that's so why the ideas those films are so different. Like, like universe, there was a Universal monster movies universe, but it wasn't a universe. Like, but it's the same. They had, they had some things showed up with each other, and they, you know, like they had, you know, uh, the characters appeared in movies together, but 
often it wasn't the same version of that character it was yes. somebody else playing the character they didn't reference events from anything it was just like they just popped up and they had a movie together so it was all kind of like hey this car- this movie on its own made a good good deal of money this movie on its own made a good deal of money uh, throw Abbott and Costello in there we'll, we'll see what happens and you know, that's we'll the thing but so. they've had House of Frankenstein and House of Dracula before the Abbott and Costello films so yeah, even yeah, before yeah. comedy it's just the level of filmmaking and like the level of what you expect in a horror film drop and that's yeah. why these versus films for slashers should have happened at the very late 80s if not early 90s yeah they would have made a killing <clears throat> yeah and that's why you know when part 7 comes out it's supposed to be Carrie versus Jason that's why I like the movie too, because it has yeah. those elements. I, it probably would have been way worse as actually Carrie, but it's fun. This is why Freddy vs. Jason in the 2000s is always going to feel like House of Dracula. How, like, you had an idea that would have been great a few years earlier, but you took too fucking long, and this f- period of filmmaking has ruined it. I'm sorry. Tell you what, like, like, I, like um, I read that book that just detailed all the different attempts. The amount of just treatments and scripts that they wrote for a Freddy vs. Jason movie. And, wow. It's just like, they... It took them a decade. Yeah. It took them an entire fucking decade. It, it took actually, them more Actually, more than a decade. Because they were, it, the idea even, started when Part 7 was coming out. Yes, yeah, so even before Part 9, when they actually teased that thing they were still trying to make it already they just did it to kind of just fucking part pants. seven was almost gonna go to new line yeah so and that's when they were starting with a we should do this or do that and they didn't realize and they they wanted their versus film that's why part seven is the way it is it's kind of insane too because when it eventually happened and it eventually came out it made money Oh fuck yeah! It's the highest profitable money. one. I'm pretty sure out of all the fr- like the f- franchises. Probably it like it made money. Didn't make another one. There's no way if that came out nowadays, or like if we were 18 when that film came out, no fucking way we wouldn't have bought a ticket. No way, impossible. I would have seen it. Mul- I would have seen it multiple times. If it's uh, if it was even if it was I don't if it know. was the same if it was the same exact movie, and I was 17 or 18. When the way that I know I was when I was seventeen or eighteen, I would have seen that movie multiple times. I don't times. know. I would like to say yes, but that movie I could see clearly being like the dawn of justice to us. Like, fuck. No, because when, when I was seventeen or eighteen, I wasn't fucking thinking about that kind of shit nearly as we much. We saw Dawn of Justice at like twenty-one, though. Yeah, but that's a couple years. It's still longer. Seventeen, I like eighteen. To I, I still my had previous self. Is all I'm saying. I would like to say when I was 17, I probably still had dumb brain. So, like, I would have went to go see a dumbass movie like Freddy vs. Jason probably me, more than once. Me at 16? Motherfucker would have bought four tickets. I, I, I know that. Yeah, but, like, you, you think between 16 and 17 that changed? A lot of shit happened when I was 17, so yes. True. Yeah, I just, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think that at, at 17, I would have seen that more I'm than once for sure. I'm listening. I look like I am perfect, like, just covered in another layer of just water i am the damp man i am aquaman right now you know now that i now that all these franchises are returning it's the perfect time to do a freddy versus jason versus ash yeah it that is always happen. gonna feel like the biggest missed opportunity I, we've ever gotten. i know it's a comic i know it's a comic I love comics. Not even cl- it's, I like comics I, more than anything else, but still. I read I read the treatment or whatever for that, and look, what it required a lot of leaps to, to put that in context and like make that make sense. But fuck it, that sounded like a blast. Oh yeah. I wish that. I fucking wish that happened. Bringing back all of Jason's uh, Jason's um, kills as deadites oh that'd be a great scene fuck yeah dude give me that movie i would lose my shit especially if it happened when kane hodder could do it 
Because like they were, they were making a whole point of, uh, I think it's Freddy who was trying to get the Necronomicon or something like that. Fuck, give me that, dude. That sounds like a blast. This might be the tangent where I feel like we've gone too far. <laughs> yeah, I know. But at, after after learning some of the stuff about the Necronomicon and Nash versus Evil Dead, it's like Freddy getting, getting his hands on the on the Necronomicon makes sense to me. I don't give a fuck. That movie sounds like a blast, but whatever. It doesn't matter. Part six, six is pretty lit. Six is the the divulge. Six is when Jason changes. Six is when your expectation expectations change, and just kind of the universe for Jason and Friday changes. Yeah, completely. Like, we talk about Victor Miller and Cunningham arguing over rights about who owns Jason, who owns the hockey mask, who owns this shit. Six is the real place where you change what Jason means, where like. We want the hockey mask, we want Jason, but if you had that character at six onwards, people wouldn't wouldn't mind. They'd be happy. If you brought it back to Jason from like two, three, and four, people might be a little upset. It, yeah, I mean if, especially in that era if it was back then, because I mean like that's essentially what they did with the remake. Yeah. Um they kind of cut their losses on that whole um you know, comedic sensibility for the character, sadly. But um, yeah, I mean, this is this is a turning point for I would almost argue slashers. Oh yeah. I mean, this is this is balls deep in the fucking MTV era of of filmmaking, and it's time for it. Basically, let's take this movie. Let's have it be fun for teenagers. This is when, I mean, obviously slashers have always been been targeted at teenagers, despite the fact that most of them can't can't actually go see the movies, but when you really lean into those sensibilities of like the MTV generation, it really is targeted at like 16 year olds, yeah, 16, 17 year olds. And when you do that and you embrace that level of fun, it completely changes the genre. Oh, hundred percent. You know, I haven't seen a, a ton of slashers from this era of slashers like from this late 80s kind of or mid to late 80s past then that are not you know the big three um mostly the like the slashers i've really dove, dove into are early 80s slashers because it's usually the ones where you actually get the most gore yeah. and the most you know un, uninhibited kills it's also when they were most frequently coming out yeah but i also i wouldn't be surprised if i watched one from like 1987 and it was more like this because mm-hmm. you know this movie did well and change it has a very c- yeah it has a completely very clear change in tone that I think is very much to this movie's benefit I think if this movie was more like 2 and 3 it would not be nearly not even close to it guy. wouldn't work no it's completely structured around that tone and that's why it's great that's why it's my favorite it knows exactly what it's gonna be final score nine okay ten i say nine <laughs> okay yeah. I, I just know i think i gave two and 9.5 and that's still my favorite so i'll probably say 9.5 9 9.5 it, it's it's close yeah this one's really good i i would think that the the only reason why two is still over is character well i had a great conversation i have a few questions i want to bring up when we end the series but because i'm currently in developing a sweat coma i'm gonna have to call it and i had a, a blast talking about this and i can't wait to talk about the next episode which i know i love that movie too so thanks a lot for joining us for this one i hope you're excited for the next one and yep keep on keeping on have some more fridays to enjoy and we'll see you later Bye bye